I call this meeting to order at 6.30 p.m., a special meeting of the Board of Directors, Isla Vista Community Services District, Thursday, May 11th, 2017, uh, located at 970 Embarcadero Del Mar. Uh, Secretary Brandt, could you take the roll? Director Bertrand. Present. Director Jordan. Present. Director Brandt, I'm here. Director Freeman. Here. Director Hedges. Director Geis. Here. Director Thurlow. Okay, we have a quorum, five members present, directors Geis and Hedges absent. Um, and I just want to announce that this meeting is being recorded. Um, and do any board members have anything to report? Um, I actually do not believe that we should talk about that sort of thing in a special meeting. Well, it's been agendized and I offered. So. I have nothing to report. Okay. Nothing to report. Thank you. Nothing to report. Um, <coughs> Now, a uh, public comment period. At this time, any member of the public may speak on matters within the subject jurisdiction of the Board of Directors that are not on the agenda. The Board will not take action on any item not on the agenda except as provided by law. Uh, public comment will be for a period of four minutes. Cool. Would you like yeah, to speak? Yeah, I won't need four minutes. Uh, okay. I just need like a minute, actually. Um, I sent this comment to Jay so you can reference it later on when you get to the agenda items that I referenced, but just so that I get it out of my mouth now and then. Y'all can deal with it. Uh, so three things. Firstly, your use of the word rescind in agenda item 3.18. Uh, if you refer to your agenda attachment D, you'll find that the term used for the action that you're attempting to take is invalidation. So if you could uh, change that word to invalidate, uh, rescind to invalidate, that would be really cool. Um, secondly, the scope of work for the new ad hoc committee uh, in the recommendation B of that same item. Uh, so you're asking them to do, all you're asking to do, third time's the charm, I guess. All you're asking them to do is consider. Uh, the problem with that is they'll just keep considering for months and months and then they will have considered. Uh, you need them to, for example, create a report or uh, create a set of guidelines for the district in terms of community engagement activities. So there has to be like something that they're doing, right? Uh, besides considering, I mean, unless all you want them to do is consider. Uh, and then thirdly, concerning item 3.3, uh, I assume you're gonna try to use form 805, the consultancy form, instead of 804, because that's the only one you've attached to your agenda. We've attached both. Oh, really? Okay, mm -hmm. it wasn't sent out in the email, so. Um, yeah, 805 is problematic, uh, because classifying them as, in, uh, as consultants won't work. A uh, consultant is defined by Black's Law Dictionary, the second edition, as a professional that has expertise requested for a fee. Your interns are neither professionals, nor do they have expertise in a particular matter that the district is pursuing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, no other uh, members of the public here. So with that, uh, we will move on to the discussion and action items. Uh, first up, 3.1, consider options for curing and correcting action taken to create the community engagement ad hoc committee. We're gonna consider options to take action to clarify, cure, and correct a motion and dispute to create the community engagement ad hoc committee at a convening of the board of directors on March 21st, 2017. Um, and this is in response to demands from a member of the public. Um, attached to this item we have both the minutes um, of that part of uh, the March 21st meeting. And then we also have an excerpt from Open and Public 5, um, a guide to the Brown Act published by uh, the California League of Cities, um, contributed to by a diverse group of uh, knowledgeable folks in the, in the area, and a, a great guide to the Brown Act, though this is not in any way for us to be taken as legal advice. Um, now, just uh, to give some background, if you go to the page 57 in that attachment, which is the one that has um, highlighted on the right side, um, practice tip, a lawsuit to invalidate must be preceded by a demand to cure and correct the challenged action in order to give the, the legislative body an opportunity to consider its options. The Brown Act does not specify how to cure or correct a violation. The best method is to rescind the action being complained of and start over, or reaffirm the action if the local agency relied on the action, and rescinding the action would prejudice the local agency. Um, my thought on this before uh, we go off to discussion is, while I do not necessarily think that there 
was a problem with the initial creation of this. I do take very seriously complaints from the public, and uh, we're here to improve the relationship between the public and the participation between the public and local government. And since the community engagement ad hoc committee, to my knowledge, has not met and has not reported to this board, I see uh, no issue in rescinding the initial motion to clarify. I think um, it's a good faith effort for us to um, take into consideration the input we've received and um, move forward in a way that's very clear with what's going on. Uh, anyone like to comment? Director Freeman. Yeah, um, so as you, as you stated, the Public Engagement Committee um, did not ever meet. Um, initially, it was just due to Father John and I having uh, really communicating to make it happen and uh, being gone in various ways. Uh, and then uh, just the last week, it was um, I spoke with uh, Rodney Gould at the Park District, um, and he stated that he did not feel that an ad hoc committee would actually be allowed to. Interesting. <laughs> that an ad hoc committee would be allowed to uh, meet with a member of the public. Uh, and so I actually then asked uh, the law firm that I hired to look into this matter, uh, and I actually had told them, please, please, please give me this by end of day Thursday, and they did not. So I do not know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the big purposes that Father John had for um, requesting that this be an ad hoc committee, or at least being supportive of being an ad hoc committee, was that it was to allow us to easily meet randomly and on an ad hoc basis with the public. Um, the, uh, um, yeah, otherwise, I will state that I disagree with uh, um, Gabriel's uh, requirement, essentially, that we change the word rescind to invalidate. I agree with you that because the means uh, that because it never met, uh, that we are um, we are actually safe just doing a rescind. Um, but uh, and essential, and, and also I understand why you would want to do that based upon the wording of Open and Public Five, which I love to Open and Public IV, right? Open and Public Four. <laughs> yes, see, that works um, really. But uh, Open and Public Five, yeah, based on that wording. So I. Um, oh, yeah, but then give it with, without knowing well, the information about whether this ad hoc committee would be able to meet with the public. Otherwise. Um, uh, I mean, I'm fine voting on this and making this happen, and then we can move on later. Absolutely. And one more thing to keep in mind, if you look at um, the, uh, in the recommended options that um, I noticed in this agenda, um, part B, it says, create a community engagement ad hoc committee to be tasked with considering procedures for outreach and engagement activities to the Isla Vista community regarding the actions and convenience of the board of directors uh, during the startup phases of the district to disband on or before January 1st, 2018 and direct the present, uh, blah, blah, blah. But really the important part there, I think, is to be tasked with considering procedures for outreach and engagement activities. The ad hoc committee from there reports back to the board and should, for specific action things, such as tabling at an event, distributing information, making a presentation, the com ad hoc committee will come back to the board and uh, the board will vote to uh, direct the, uh, a, a director or um, an intern or some other uh, participant to, to go forward with whatever that activity is. Um, I would be friendly with uh, changing it to be tasked with considering and recommending procedures if, if that satisfies uh, the, the input that was given to us earlier oh, for wow. giving it some more action. Um, but I am also happy with how it's written. All you're asking to do is consider, please assign them a direction, i.e. the creation of a report or a set of guidelines for community engagement activities. Oh, I, that, that does make sense to me. Um, so uh, I, uh, like I, I agree with that commentary, that, that it would feel more like an ad hoc committee if we actually had an output and like a, a good termination condition. Okay. Um, so. Director Brown. So my one question is um, regarding your comments about like Father John's intentions for the committee and whether or not it can still be an ad hoc. So I just kind of wanted to clarify what we all think this committee is. So this committee is something that is going to be um, developing procedures for how outreach and engagement activities are done, whether that is um, developing a, a, a database of different events where the district can go and represent itself. Um, whether that is um, uh, developing different, uh, like a, a list of places where we can go and hand out the agenda, places where we can post the agenda, things like that. Um, and go ahead, bounce off me. I, I just want to make sure that this is all very 
transparent because I think yeah, I had some confusion when we voted yeah, on this I, the first I, I, time. I actually, when Ethan responded to me, that actually reoriented in my head what I and so and I really should have started my last uh, response with uh, a, a, yes. Actually, everything I was saying about Father John's intentions is kind of modified by the new wording, and I like the new wording. Okay, and I and I, and I really feel comfortable, particularly if we add um, like a, a report to the board. Um, uh, that were like a, the construction of a, like the creation, the wording even that Gabriel had, which I kind of liked, was creation of a report. Um, and I like the way that Spencer's talking about um, uh, a creation of a report detailing um, uh, channels by which uh, we can ensure uh, public outreach and engagement. Fantastic. Uh, Director Brandt? I like that too. Would you mind if I just read this off the screen and then? Had, like with the minor modifications with the understanding that the first thing that the committee could do is create some sort of a report I'm okay. sorry I misunderstood so moved. well first I, I, I think that um, a should be a separate thing since that's really the reason we're here to, okay. to rescind right. so I have a motion mr. chair uh, uh, director Brown. I have like a question director guys oh problem that we didn't that we didn't define what the ad hoc committee was supposed to do Director Brown. Um, so, as you'll see on the uh, on the minutes excerpt, the initial motion uh, created uh, an ad hoc committee with the mission of ensuring that in the first five months of the district's operations, the CSD serves the whole community. Um, the phrase "serving the whole community" is, I mean, honestly, just flowery language. Gotcha. It doesn't okay. mean anything. I got so, it. I'm um, fine. Okay. So, Director Brett, do you have a motion? Uh, I move to rescind action taken to create the Community Engagement Ad Hoc Committee. I'll second. Okay, we have a Wait, first. Didn't we say we second. didn't want to use the word rescind? Uh, Gabriel did not want to use the word rescind. Uh, I support using the word rescind. Okay, sorry. Totally. I disagree Thank with you. Gabriel. Uh, I like and that. can we uh, <laughs> clarify that to you? Uh, wait, can you pull up the the how it's being typed? Do you have that on here? No, I Google Docs. Oh, could you John read that back to us? Jonathan? Yes, the said action taken to create the community engagement ad hoc committee. I read it off. Brad and guys. Okay, can we add at the end of that at the March twenty first, two thousand seventeen meeting? Yep. Should we add the agenda item or is that that's good? So friendly yeah. second. Make the motion. Friendly first. Yes, we should. Um, motion made by Director, Director Durlo. Durlo. Okay. And who was it seconded by? Uh, Jordan. Okay. And those amendments are friendly. Okay. And could you read back what that yes. final uh, motion to rescind action taken to create the community ad hoc community engagement ad hoc committee at the March twenty first meeting. Motion made by Director Thurlow and seconded by Director Jordan. Okay. Um, and it does it sound clear in there that we're talking about that previous motion that was made? Yep. You'll think? Okay. Okay. So. Sounds lovely. Okay. Any I like our new tablecloth. Sorry. Any <laughs> any other board comment? <laughs> That's great. Any public comment? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Okay. Now um, was there a motion for uh, the rest of this this item? Yes, I have a motion. Uh, I move to create a community engagement ad hoc committee to be tasked with developing procedures for outreach and engagement activities to the Isla Vista community regarding the actions and convenience of the Board of Directors during the, quote, startup, unquote, phases of the district to disband on or before January 1st, 2018 and direct the president of the board to appoint two directors to serve. Is there a second? second? Uh, uh, I'll second for a discussion. Can you um, repeat that? Uh, you can copy and paste it from the agenda. Oh, oh okay. Director Guess. There's I just one heard earlier someone was suggesting considering, and you changed that word considering to something else. Uh, developing. Developing procedures and recommendations. Did we want to add recommendations or no? I think recommendations because that is kind of providing a report to the board, which yeah. I think was. That's right. friendly. Friendly. So Jonathan actually wasn't copy and paste then. Uh, and, I, and, I, and so he said developing instead of considering, and I do prefer developing. Okay. So, Give me a second. I can't copy paste too well, so I'm going to go off the other agenda. Cool. And we'll just wait until. You want the whole thing? 
It's it's all of one. All or all I'm sorry, all of uh B. B, yeah, okay. except developing instead of considering. Yes, um and the other change is that um and it's recommendations after procedures. It's procedures and recommendations. I like that minor modification. I think it satisfies the earlier commentary about creation and everything. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. Modification. Um, um, yes, please. Uh, motion to create a community engagement ad hoc committee to be tasked with developing procedures and recommendations for outreach and engagement activities to the Adivis community regarding the actions and convenience of the board of directors during the startup phases of the district to disband on or before January 1, 2018 and direct the president of the board to appoint two directors to serve. Awesome. All right, any more board discussion? Any public comment? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Um, and that's with directors uh, Hedges and Thurlow absent, as was uh, the previous vote we took. And um, all, uh, si since this was noticed that the, the president of the board would likely uh, appoint two directors to serve, um, I, I would like it to be stated in the minutes that I'm appointing Director Freeman and Director Hedges to serve on this ad hoc committee. All right. Uh, I have a motion, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to, or, Motion to direct the president of the board to inform demanding parties of actions taken to cure and correct challenged actions pursuant to California Government Code Section 54960.1C2. Second. Yeah, it's a copy and paste. Okay. Um, any uh, board discussion? And you've um, checked that that's the exact uh, number that he was referencing. Government code. <laughs> Yeah, in his letter. Let's just be sure. Um, well, the the specific piece of government code uh, that I copied and pasted is the piece of government code that tells us that we have to write him a letter back. Let's see. <clears throat> is it the one with the template? Uh, no, that's a supplement. Oh, good. Um, so that's right. for a cease and desist and not for a cure and correct. Uh, let me find the correct one. Yes, that's correct. Um, and this is specific for a cure and correct? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, C2. Within 30 days of receipt of the demand, the legislative body shall cure or correct the challenged action and inform the demanding party in writing of its actions to cure or correct, or inform the demanding party in writing of its decision not to cure or correct the challenged action. Um, so I'd like to amend my motion. Uh, the piece of government code at the end of the motion should read um, California Government Code Section 54960.1C2. That's actually what we have. That's what it is. Oh, so this okay. was a good, good clarification. All right. Um, I guess I can copy it wrong. Oops. All right. Any other board questions or discussion? And we have our first and second, right? Brian Geis. Brian Geis. Okay. Public comment. Seeing none, I'm calling the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Um, 5 0. Directors Thurlow, Freeman. I mean, Thurlow and Hedges absent. Director Brown. Uh, I'd like to move the item with the uh, report from the president of the board regarding uh, discussions about the grant with UCSB down on the agenda. Um, I anticipate that when the IBRPD getting, meeting gets out, uh, we might be having some more folks come in, and that seems like an item that yeah. the public would be e very interested point. in. Can I make one more comment on the previous agenda? Yes, absolutely. We have a 
Go ahead. Oh, okay. So I'm going to be in there. Um, the, uh, uh, so I actually did receive the notice, uh, the message back from my lawyer, uh, and uh, the uh, information from Rodney is incorrect. So an ad hoc committee can meet with members of the public. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. My, my yeah. Thank you. Rodney was just like adamant about it, though. So. Thank you. Um, and I, I think that's an excellent uh, point to move that. So we will uh, leave item 3.1 now, and we're moving on to item 3.3. Consider designating the creation of new positions and requiring UCSB interns to file financial disclosure forms. The board will consider designating the UCSB interns working in coordination with directors among those that are required to disclose their economic interests and may consider taking action to submit the necessary forms to the Santa Barbara County Clerk Recorder, including but not limited to forms 804 and 805, and requiring interns to submit form 700s. Attached in attachment D are both the forms 804 and 805. Um, in the page that follows each one of the respective forms, there's um, a document that explains what exactly it is. The difference between the two is uh, the form 804 is for uh, new positions of an agency, employees. Um, the form 805 is for consultants. Um, and this item came about after a member of the public has um, consistently asked whether or not our, our interns will be reporting their economic interests. Um, and I felt that it was something that our board should consider. Um, either way, uh, whichever way we want to go on it, we'll, we'll decide that, but I thought nonetheless we should at least discuss it amongst ourselves. Are they consulting sure. really for us though? Do you know what I'm saying? Like when we're talking about consulting, like I understand, I just feel like I've worked in jobs like interning with like, before and I've never had to file any of this stuff. Is that just a me thing or is this a normal practice? Um, well, my question would be, have you interned for like a legislative did you uh, have to official? do this with, no, but is this like, but I've done it with like nonprofits and stuff like well, that. Well, nonprofits don't report this. This okay. is a, this is the same type of filing as we submit as elected officials. So did you have, do you have to do this with like? I've never seen it before. So like with like, I know, I don't know your involvement, but like I just didn't know if you had to do it before. I feel like it's kind of like overkill, right? Well, I don't know. we're, uh, we're going to debate what the, the law says, but. Director Brant. Mm -hmm. So my first instinct on this, uh, I think, is the same as Natalie's. Um, but upon looking into uh, some of the FPPC regulations, um, I think that it becomes uh, a little more clear what our actions should be. I want to read a little bit from FPPC uh, regulations, section 187. Or mm, no, sorry, that's the wrong one. Give me a moment to find it. Um, this will be the. Uh, the way that the FPPC has interpreted um, the term consultant. I think it's that top one. Uh, I think it's something else, but that's okay. I can read from this too. So the um, so what it comes down to is that um, there's the question is whether or not the interns are um, participating in making a governmental decision. Um, and uh, what the regulations state is that if uh, there's someone who is, uh, well, there's a couple things. Subpoint A, negotiates without significant substantive review with a government entity or private person regarding a governmental decision referenced in paragraph A of a specific regulation. Um, advises or makes recommendations to the decision maker either directly or without su significant intervening substantive review and then there are two sub points um, but I, I think it's pretty clear that um, when the interns uh, do advise and make recommendations to directors there is no intervening substantive review it might be different if the interns were reporting to a general manager and then that general manager served as the significant intervening substantive review of the work that they had done and then provided it to us, the decision makers. Um, but I think under this, it, I think it's pretty clear um, that under FP, the way FPPC is interpreting the law, um, they, they would be considered consultants. Yes, and I'll, and I'll say that initially when I heard this complaint, I, um, I had a very similar uh, opinion because I've 
uh, interned for legislative bodies before in paid capacities, and um, this was never even something that came across uh, mm -hmm. what I needed to submit. Um, but when I thought about our unique situation, we, uh, we are an unpaid board, but we have three individuals who are being paid to assist us. Not being paid for, by us, so I don't think they're, they are our employees, so to speak. Um, however, they are working closely with decision makers on this board, um, and they are working um, very closely in coordination with those decision makers. And for that, I, even though I made it clear when I provided the orientation that um, you will not be making decisions, um, you will be here to assist, um, because initially I, I thought we would want to avoid this, um, I do see that it can, get, it can get close to where they may be um, at least seen from the outside as participating in decision making. Uh, for example, at this last uh, policy committee meeting, uh, my intern made a presentation. Even though my intern was presenting material that I prepared with her and that um, was really my point of view, um, maybe it could be argued that my intern was participating in the decision because she was speaking to directors at this public meeting. I don't know. But what I do know is that it seems close to the definition, and since we do not have legal counsel yet, um, it's something we're working on, I see this as a, a step of caution if we were to move forward on filing either an 804 or 805 and requiring interns to submit 700. Jay. Um, I would like to read something from the San Francisco City Attorney. Um, test number two, does the consultant serve in a staff capacity and participate in making certain governmental decisions? A consultant participates in making a governmental decision when he or she either, one, negotiates without sub sub uh, significant substantive review with a government entity or private person regarding a governmental decision, or two, advises or makes recommendations to a decision maker directly or without significant intervening substantive review by A, conducting research or making any investigation that requires the exercise of judgment on the part of the official and is intended to influence a government decision, or B, preparing or presenting a report, analysis, or opinion, orally or in writing, that requires the exercise or judgment and is intended to influence a governmental decision. This test relies upon the same definition of governmental decisions as test number one above, which I could refer to, but the phrase significant intervening substantive review generally means that someone other than a consultant such as another consultant or a city official must independently analyze and review from top to bottom the consultant's advice or recommendation. A consultant is deemed to have participated in a decision even if the consultant's advice or work is reviewed by several of his or her superiors. If those superiors rely on the data or analysis prepared by the consultant without checking it independently, or if they rely on the professional judgment of the consultant. By which I would then say that if we had an intern put together a report for us, unless we went to the primary source and verified everything that they provided us from top to bottom, without relying on that information from the intern, that according to this description, the intern as a consultant would actually be, um, would not have significant intervening substantive review and would be considered to be participating in, the, in go governmental decisions. Thank you, Director Brandt. I just wanted to say that the specific paragraphs that Jay just read are the exact same thing that appears um, on the FPPC website, so I think that we can take it with uh, some credibility. Absolutely. Director Jordan. Um, so, sorry, I just want to be clear of where everyone's coming from in that article. I'm just slightly out of it. So that basically says that because they're not making decisions, we don't need them to fill this out, correct? It says the exact opposite from my interpretation. I, I would describe it as because we are making decisions, but we are relying on information that is being given to us in a report from an intern without going back to the original primary source and verifying all of the information in that report um, that, um, that, that that person is in fact influencing our decision. You could imagine, for example, that they could twist the information they provide or decide to only show one of the pieces but not the other piece, and that would, um, due to a conflict of interest, and that would cause us to have, um, to have a skewed version of the world, and that's the reason why they have this particular So when test. is there a case that there, this would not need to happen then? Because in that case, I can see every single time that we have an intern being like, technically put in this position, and like, I understand we should be cautious, but also at the same time, like, there's also a lot of private things and a lot of reasons why people wouldn't want to, like in college at least, disclose some kinds of things like this, I don't know. 
which I understand obviously for privacy reasons. That's just like it's just kind of like it's not like they're they ran for office. Do you know what I'm saying? They're just like getting a job, you know. Sorry. Director Geist and then Director Brent. All right. I'm going to start off with I'm definitely voting no on this. This makes no sense to me. I understand the FPP set website. I've wa watched the county conflict of interest laws for years and all the departments that file these. And in no way, shape, or form would an intern, even in the condition they're working for us for a 10 week period, produce a document that we're not going to review and we're not going to be the decision makers. They're not going to influence our decision. They don't have, we don't even have our conflict of vote interest code completed to show what the disclosure categories are that these, these kids are supposed to fill out. This makes no sense to me. It's just like, and when Jay read all that from that attorney general, I go, exactly. They're not making decisions. Their interns fit in there. Yeah. I'm just, let me finish. Mm -hmm. Until we have a conflict of interest code completed, and shown the disclosure categories, I don't think we should have interns doing an improper thing. That they're somehow supposed to read all those sections and understand what those disclosures are and then fill this out. We get these guys for 100 hours and they're gonna spend five hours filling, reading the documents on how to fill out this disclosure. It's like, makes no sense. It makes no sense. Director these Brown. are, and they're not our employees. And you start having them fill out this report, and it's going to look like they're our employees. They are not our employees. They're the university's employees. And these conflict of interest laws don't apply to those employees. So that's just my position. Thank you. And real quick, before I go to Director Brandt, I just want to clarify, any form that the intern would be responsible for filling out would be the 700. And for most people I know my age who have filled out the Form 700, um, it is a very simple form to fill out. But Director Brandt. So first off, I want to say I agree they are not our employees. Um, they are, though, I believe, according to FPPC regulations, working in a consulting capacity due to the fact that there is not that significant intervening substantive review. And as one of the things that Jay said was that there, one of the things he read off is that normally that is defined as having a superior review the information before it goes to the decision maker. So I understand the, I mean, Look, but I mean, you are I'm their superior reviewing that stuff. But I'm and the decision I'm maker. I am the decision maker. Yeah, There's supposed to be something you, in between it. You and guys are reading way more into what a consultant is in, in terms of these disclosure laws and why they fill these out. You've got to complete that conflict of interest disclosure categories. We've got to do our job first before we start telling people to fill out forms and filing them with the clerk. All right, Director uh, George. Wait, hi, Director Brent. Okay, I have a couple questions. So, um, this is one of those areas <coughs> that, like, I feel like we've dipped into a couple times. I don't feel super comfortable making a decision on because I'm not a lawyer in the state of California, and I understand that I can read a website, but like that does not make me qualified to make these decisions. So, can we just call Hector? Hector probably knows who needs no. to fill things out. You can Director right. Brown. Oh, no, do you no, think that we could just call the county? The FPPC has a helpline, right? And ask them. Yeah, can we just it ask the writing. FPPC? Uh, Director I'm Brandt. Has yeah. Yeah. Know so, about it. What, what, what I just wanted to say is the reason that we called the special <coughs> meeting is because there is a 30-day window for <coughs> the interns to file Form 700s. So. We are at the end of the time where we would be able to receive some sort of advice on this that is independent of what we all think. So, I, I mean, trust me when I say that it makes me frustrated that this is coming up now, and it makes me frustrated that this is coming up at all. Um, the last thing that I want to do is put the intern that is assigned to me through this process. Um, while I don't think that it is a very um, hard process to go through, it is still another hoop to jump through nonetheless. Um, on top of that, um, I would be shocked if uh, any of these interns had anything to report um, that could ever interfere with our decision-making process. So I just want to be clear and, and say that I share everyone's visceral uh, annoyance with this. At the same time, uh, this is something that if we're going to do it, um, we need to do it now 
Um, and you know, I and I'll, and I'll say, you know, I, my my dad is a city planner, and he serves as a planning consultant. He files a form seven hundred, um, and I, you know, I understand that the roles are different. Um, but and again, I wanted to address one of the concerns you had earlier, Natalie, which was that uh, the, the privacy concerns, which are very real, um, I don't believe that anyone's address or phone number is going to be floating around on the internet. If that was just that, there's like other things that can be potentially very private for students, especially. Like, I don't know. I I I know that like I had things that made me very hesitant, like just because of like me being an independent financially and there's all kinds of stuff too. We're all students here and filing FAFSAs and everything else and I think we should definitely keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I think that it's just, and I, I understand like, I understand where you're coming from. I just literally, this is just one of the circumstances where I'm like, I wish we had a lawyer to consult with because I just feel like this is one of those things that like, I don't feel super comfortable making a call on and that's what makes me so anxious about it. But just because also, like, I understand that erring on the side of caution, too. Like, I totally understand that. But at the same time, like, I feel like if we start a precedent of, like, let's just fill out every form that could potentially, like, get us into a little, like, back into a corner one day, we're going to spend, like, half the time at the reporter's office instead of, like, uh, or the elections office than we will, like, being able to actually get stuff done with the interns. Because there's already been so much going on with them, you know? Because, I, I, you know, especially because they're not our employees, does that mean that now we have to worry about, like, all kinds of, like, uh, other things, like, let's say if they get hurt, how do we deal with workers' compensation and that and other stuff like that? Because I just feel like once we get too intertwined with all that, then it becomes their, that they're our employees. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a statement real quick and then call on Director Grant. In response to your comments, Director Geis, um, about how our conflict of interest code isn't finished yet, um, which I do think is a valid comment, Right under the disclosure requirements uh, subheading um, on uh, the 805 description section, it says disclosure requirements should conform to the range of duties. Alternatively, the agency must require an individual to file under the broadest disclosure category in the agency's conflict of interest code, or if the agency does not have a conflict of interest code, full disclosure. Um, so that language does provide for us to take action on this before um, a code is in place or um, completed. And again, I'll echo what Director Brandt said. I'm not thrilled with this, but as someone who is working with one of the direct, one of the, one of the interns, um, I, I do particularly care about this, and the last thing I would want to see is in these next few weeks, as we are beginning our conversations with the university, that we hit trouble on something so small. All we would need to do, should we go with a Form 805 or Form 804 is designate the secretary or the president to submit this, a simple form, and then those directors who are working with interns to, to help their interns fill it out. Most interns are going to have nothing to report. Most are just going to need to check uh, maybe Section C and write maybe one other job they had. Um, they won't even have to report this internship on their form because it's from a government agency. If they've worked on campus, they won't even need to report that. Um, student loans, I'm not no. positive if they're reportable, but I don't believe that they no, are. they're not. I have many student loans out and did not report any of them. Yes, and I'm, I'm very concerned about putting our interns in a, in a bad spot, but they're intelligent people. They're here to make a difference, and if we get in trouble because um, we're in a gray area, we're in an area that just looks like it's a little too close to being consultants, um, I think it could put us in an unfortunate situation in these first couple of months. Director Brown. So a, a couple things. The first is that um, as uh, we continue discussions on the future of this internship program, I really feel that we have to do everything that we possibly can in order to keep the program afloat and expand the program. Um, and I don't think that uh, given you know how much this program has already been put under the microscope, both in this context and in others, I don't think um, that it would be a great idea to take uh, a risk and not have, uh, uh, not ask those of us who are assigned, who have interns assigned to us to work with uh, the interns to fill out these forms. Um, and um, I'm blanking on the other thing that I was going to say. Um, I, I guess the last thing that I have to say is I would really ask that everyone who's hesitant on this 
to not allow the perceived intentions of where this request came from to affect your overall judgment on whether it's not or affecting my judgment okay. all i'm saying is i'm voting no because this makes no sense there is not an intern working for an agency in the state of california that is required to file these things it's not the intention the intention is a date new data processing manager a new licensing program and a new manager and it's an agency you know these are things that are go a general counsel, outside consultants, you know, these are environmental impact reports, your dad being a planning commissioner. It makes no sense that an intern working for us on a 10 week program at the courtesy of the university for a learning experience that we somehow think they're gonna be making major recommendations that aren't gonna be looked at. It just makes no sense. And I don't think we have anything to be afraid of other than somebody's getting naive on this stuff and needs to know what the, the real purpose of these disclosure laws are. And that is that you can't have an economic interest in something you're making a decision on. That's pure and simple. The interns aren't in that position. And if you go right to FPPC, they'll probably give you an answer in a day. If you put the facts out there, they'll probably write right back to you. Director Freeman, then Director Brent. Um, I mean, if you want to go there, Bob, I'm going to say that maybe you're being a little naive. I mean, like, I'm not being naive. Nice. Excuse hey, me. No, hey, no, 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 okay, excuse me. Everyone, no one speak yeah. except Director Freeman. Yeah. So, I mean, please, please, please don't poke that like that. Like, um, the um, from my perspective, the goal of these financial disclosure um, uh, the laws are to. Main, not to just affect the decision maker, they are to affect the chain of information that leads up to the decision maker. And so that's why I described the way that this ends up working out for an intern, is that if that intern were to skew information or limit information as provided to a decision maker, that would essentially uh, put them in a position to influence and alter that decision. Um, normally, you mention interns at other locations. The way that an intern would normally work is you would be working underneath the general manager, you'd be working underneath um, possibly somebody even lower in the staff um, at, an, at an organization. If you were an intern for the San Inez Community Service District, you would be underneath Jeff Hodge. Jeff Hodge would be essentially providing an educational experience towards you. He'd be giving you some tasks to be performing that he doesn't have to review. But if he were to have you put together a report, he would be essentially having you do all the typing, but then verifying all that information with his understanding, expertise, and knowledge in order before it goes to the actual board, the decision makers. Uh, the the um, it's not that like, you keep poking at the idea that this is about the decision makers, but this is it, the, the the statements that we've been reading make it very clear that this is about people who influence decision makers, not decision makers, and we are missing all of the intermediary levels of organizational hierarchy that you are used to seeing, and that's why it's different. Um, Director, um, I'm I mean all I I really want to echo those comments in and of the fact that. Um, there is no other internship program in the state like this, and that's the reason why this is the exception to the rule, uh, given that we have interns who are working directly under directors that are involved in preparing information for us. Um, I mean, if we're talking about the assignment that I gave my intern to review government code uh, and make a, uh, essentially highlight the things that we need to do, that is, those are things that are directly influencing our decision-making process, both as a board and in committee when we decide what things to take up. And I understand the frustration with I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting voting no. Down. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. uh, Director Jordan, now for that public comment. Okay. Um, I just, like, I, I'm, I know that, like, I definitely appreciate everybody's opinions. I just think that, like, all of us are directors and we should receive, like, speaking of, like, getting extra counsel, I think we should really get, like, the FPPC's opinion on it before anything else. And, like, I appreciate it and we could read it off the website, but it's different than having someone, like, we email them and they actually respond to us with a yes or no answer because then it's definitive and it's not debatable and then it eliminates this whole, like, yes, no, gray area vote. I, do you think that you could let me know how many days left we have in our 30 days? to be able to do this because I'm I could type them up an email in like five minutes and just ask them a question and they'll get back to me because they work from 9 to 11 every morning like well I'll uh, provide a point of information before going out to public comment I believe we have two to three days oh that's really soon uh, Jonathan did I see your hand oh, this is a very quick point of thought 
Um, I, I've asked the FPPC for information before, and uh, it took them a while to get back because they actually had a lawyer write the response. Um, yeah, because, so which it's is not, great. It's not something that we'll get back. I got and I got I asked them questions about mine, and they got back to me pretty quickly. But that's because I called them like seventy times. <laughs> 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 and, and real quick point of information before I call on Director Grant: um, for official advice, you have to send a written request, and that written request um, takes usually over a week to come back. Any advice that you get over the phone is non-binding. Only the written requests can be uh, taken as official legal advice, Director Brent. So the when the FPPC does issue these recommendations uh, or these, I don't know, what, what exactly is the legal term for them? In any event, when you send them a letter and ask them for an opinion on something like this, and they send you back a letter, they compile all the letters that they feel are generally applicable and like are sort of like, say, an FAQ. Um, what we have been reading for is one of these letters, where it's a piece of regulation and a document that contains a bunch of different excerpts from these letters that then explain step by step um, how the definition of consultant has evolved and uh, what specific uh, different cases there were that came before them and how they're ruled on. When they refer to an advice letter, they give it like a specific name. Like in this case, it's called the Davidson advice letter. And then there's the Perry advice letter, almost kind of like court cases. So I just want, I, I understand the, the want for more information. And I'm never claiming to be someone who is authorized to give legal advice or even someone who's capable of doing that in an amateur capacity. But from reading this document, I think it's clear that it would be better for us to file the, have our interns file these forms rather than expose them to that liability given this short time window that we have for them to legally file these forms. So I'll, I'll just say that, again, what we're focusing on here is filling an immediate need. We can make this request to get that, that legal decision. We can make this request tonight. Uh, one of us can go and write it. But even with that, I still think that we should go ahead with this, this decision. This doesn't bind us for the entirety of our internship program. This, this would require this first cohort to submit these forms. But what that will do is it will allow us to make sure that we're in compliance um, before we find out really unfortunately that we're out of compliance. Uh, this will allow us to just make sure that we're doing the best we can to be transparent and to follow the law. Um, I think that we can, <coughs> in the next few weeks, determine what the next step should be going forward, um, which we may find out that, no, we don't need to file these, and we don't need our interns to, to report these interests. Um, but right now, I just think this is really a common sense approach to, to, to do right on our, on our part, because we have received a significant amount of um, public question on this, even if it's just from one person, it's been loud. Um, and my biggest fear in these weeks, guys, is that we could find ourselves in trouble over something that was easily preventable. We have really good things going on right now, and I understand that this is a hard decision for all of us to make, but I just urge support for this because I really want to make sure that this doesn't hold us back in a few weeks, because if there was some sort of action to come against this, even if we have a lot of merit on our side, we still don't have that infrastructure in place to respond at this moment. Director Jordan. Okay, I definitely appreciate all that you're saying, but I just want to give my opinion on this one. Is in my world, the squeaky wheel doesn't get the oil. That's just not how it works with me. And if everyone who yells the loudest is going to get the paperwork, we're literally going to drown. So I think that just because, like, which I understand, and I'm not trying to accuse anyone, I'm just saying like as a general broad thing, people are literally, that's just the nature of the beast is that people are always going to be asking for more and proof of this and proof of that and where is this contract and that and it's like, it, I think that sometimes if we keep going overboard with that just as a generality then it's going to become more of an issue and I think it's important of course to respond promptly to things like this um, <coughs> but at the same time I think that seeking some kind of counsel, even if it is them just sending us an email back from the FPPC, moves it from a point of opinion to a point of this is the reference that we have instead of Google. You know, like now it's an email and this is the reference that they've given us instead of it's our opinion on the matter itself. Do you get where I like see the difference there? Because then when it comes down to the way that we like actually vote on this, it's like a 
what we think is best instead of like what some like using the resources that like someone who actually has the knowledge has like given us you know well I do want to say before I call on director Grant that there are three directors up here who are very concerned about this and um, with that there's the squeaky wheel is uh, three out of five wheels here um, and our research, while we did use Google, um, we are looking at California government code. We are looking at the FPPC website. We're on the same team here. We we no, both totally we both understand. don't feel um, thrilled about this, but I do think it's important for us to just make the best faith effort to satisfy something that that we may need to by law. And from how I'm seeing this right now, I just see this as too too close. Um, to call because we don't lose anything if we do this. We, we don't lose anything at all, but if we don't do this and find out we're out of compliance, that there's where the threat comes. Director the Brent and then Director Guy. Uh, I was gonna say the same exact thing. I think that, um, that, that Ethan said in regards to the fact that the frame of reference isn't Google. The frame of reference is the Fair Political Practices Commission. Um, and I think there's something, I think, that is an important distinction we made, um, and you know I, I understand when you're, you're talking about you know in in your world um, you know the squeaky, squeaky, squeaky wheel doesn't get the oil, um, but let's be honest this is something that's new to all of us. We've never had to govern a special district that does not have any sort of administrative infrastructure at all, and in your world that's not the case. There is an administrative infrastructure in place. Um, if, if we're talking about something like Associated Students, you have those channels to but go it's and not, get. Like, I'm not always students. referencing. Director Brand Brand I'm not is always referencing AS either. Like this is okay, just, but Director Brand is not, recognized. Okay. Well, you know, it's not. But just it's every time students. everybody always wants to say like, "Oh, it's not AS. We're not." Like, Excuse me. Not, you're though. out of order, Director Brand. It's it's not just about Associated Students. Um, it, it it's about everything. This is a real government, and we can take on real liability. Um, and uh, I'm sorry if you felt like annoyed by that, but I mean, you know, if, if there's associated students does not have its existence threatened if it messes up. I'll just say, we are, have our existence threatened if we mess up. So I think that's really important to take into account. Right, director Geist, then Director so Jordan. I just want to make a comment. When you're reading law and you're down into the details of the law, you have to go back to the original theory behind the law. And the original theory behind these laws are, you know, first of all, we have to do our job as the board and get those disclosure forms out. What are we supposed to disclose? So that people know what the, the disclosure categories are and why we're doing this. This law does not apply to this level of employee it, or this level of consultant. It just does not apply. It, it's, we're, we're over reading the law and we're overreacting to these, de somebody digging into little details that I don't believe apply to us and I'm not gonna vote to apply people to go take actions when I don't think the law applies to it. And so I'm, I'm still gonna vote no. Thank you, Director Jordan. And I, and I don't know what the consequences are. What are these consequences we're worried about? Well, can we find that out? Like, what is the what does it mean to be out of compliance here with this specific agenda? Like, with this specific item, and I understand that, but also, I, like, I I feel like we we're not expected to be like omnipotent. Like, we don't have to. Like, I feel like even if in the case that let's say theoretically that this is something that we need to file, I feel like that kind of would have been as part of like a broader scheme of bringing in these interns. Do you know what I'm saying? And of course, we don't have the framework laid out. But like, I think that we need to kind of figure out what, like, I understand that maybe we do need to submit this. I understand that, that's, that's definitely a potential. But the thing is that I just don't feel like we ever received that like basic either like instruction or basic like background to do so without us just like, you know, going for it. Which it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, but it's just more to the point that I just feel like we never had that nobody had disclosed the, the need for it other than a, like a complaint. Director Freeman. Our liability, my understanding, is potentially unbounded um, in the sense that one of the ways that the law is set up, the, um, an onus is on the intern to do something, and the intern does not do it, then there is a um, 
$5,000 fine against the intern, which they would be able to legally challenge us in order to obtain. And the way that the law is written, um, we, the law actually would force us to pay their legal fees. Um, so there's there are actually some complexity there. That said, the FPPC, the $5,000 um, fine would um, possibly end up being something that there's some flexibility at either the county or state level regarding, and they might simply point at us and be like, well, that was obviously your fault for not filing that form 804, and so they might kick that immediately to us, in which case our liability might be $5,000. Um, we do have negative $25,000, I will point out. Like, I can continue to state it like that. Um, so, <coughs> okay, I get it. So, who does file this, and what? I like. I understand we listed all those as people. I still don't get how the interns fall into the category of it being necessary. Sure. So, as far as filing, um, we would authorize or direct someone at this board um, to submit. Um, the form 805 if it's consultant, which I think we're all in agreement if it's anything, it's consultant, not employee. Um, and then from there, we would require the interns to submit the form 700 to the recorder, clerk recorder's office. Um, this, the purpose of this form is just to have something to uh, compare what they're reporting to. Um, so this is us declaring these positions as um, as consultants through the 805, and then the 700 is just to report those. Can I make another suggestion instead is, because these are not our employees, and um, we've said that a bunch of times and kind of established that, and they are university employees, and the university is very aware of compliance matters and happen to have an amazing legal team that handles all of this, if we were to send it to the UCSB legal team, which I do with like almost everything that I have a question with, they have a way of getting things done in a very quick and efficient manner if you make it important to them. So if we were to just send it over to them, it's still a work, uh, fri tomorrow's Friday, they could probably get it done by noon, you know? Uh, and if they would be able to give us actual legal advice and also they'd probably be able to handle it or tell us that we need to be filing this form because that's their employees. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the not, not ours. Uh, Director Brown. So my question to you then is when are we going to meet to take this official action that we can take right now? I don't know. We pulled this one like out of a hat like yeah, less right. than 24 hours ago. We did. There's a 24 hour <laughs> noticing requirement. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get at. So um, we're going to have to convene again if that is the case. Or we could authorize someone to take the action in the case that legal advice is administered to do so. Well, I'm, I'm going to just point out that uh, in the services and the agreement between the Community Services District and UCSB, there has never been any mention of us receiving legal assistance from the university. Same with the county. We work closely with the university. We work closely with the county. Um, on the county side, we've even been told, no way, that wouldn't happen. I'd anticipate a similar thing at UCSB. We're not a UCSB entity. Um, we shouldn't assume that we would receive any legal service from them. Though I do think it's a great idea. But do you think even though in the case that we say, hey, listen, these are yours, you're responsible for them, they're, they're yours, they're your, not in, like to be mean, but like they're your problem. You've decided to like, no, they're not your problem, but they, you've decided to help us out and bring them to us. And we've established that we have nothing except that one MOU to call for our, like our agreement with them. I just don't see how us taking more on with regards to intern separates that more. It just brings us closer together and entangles that more and will make all of our contracts more confusing in the future of where the responsibility for the interns lie. And I think if we just bounce it back to the school, I'm not even saying the lawyers, bounce it back to the poli sci department and say, hey, I don't know if you've done this in the past because they do not like they they do have other students go to other local <coughs> governments. I don't know, is this a usual practice for you? Do you think that you could please advise us on the ways that you've done this in the past? And then they could probably handle it from there probably more efficiently or at least give us some guidance on how it's usually done. Or they can call legal counsel because they're a, United, they're a UCSB entity, the Police Department, you know? And then we'd have legal counsel, we wouldn't have to deal with it. That could be solid. If anyone agrees or not, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. All right, uh, thank you. We're going to go um, out to public comment and then uh, Director Freeman and Director Brandt. I know I'm walking in on in the middle of this, but I apologize. From what I'm picking up, I believe Natalie may be right, guys. They are under the umbrella of the university. These are the university's interns. If they felt that they had to fill out these 805s, 
I would think that it would be in, in, in their realm. Um, as far as I know, on 700s, the only people that fill out 700s are board members and management. And we have no other employees within our district that do 700. So I don't know all the details. Again, I'm walking in, in the middle. But I also think those are their babies. You know, mm -hmm. they are the universities ultimately responsible for them. And I think it would be very easy to just just kick that question over to them. That's what I'm thinking. That's my, I'm sorry if I'm messing something up, but that's just from what I've heard. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Yeah. Uh, Director Freeman. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the Form 800 is actually, Form 80 something is something that we would be filing. Um, the, the Form 700, the issue is, is that you're used to having a general manager. Um, we don't have any management, and so there is no substantive intervening review. Um, the, um, uh, if you were, and, and the issues about uh, consulting company, I'll you know, point out, so as if, if you were an employee of a consulting company, you are still a consultant for whatever the other um, companies are that you are consulting for. Um, yes, it would be nice if the university took control of that their their issues here and would provide legal assistance. And I really, really appreciate your comments on that, Natalie, with relation to that. But we didn't put that in the MOU. Um, there was, um, I mean, there's an example of many things that would have been nice to have included in our MOU, but there was no discussion of the MOU. So I, I don't think we are in a position now to be trying to claim that we can go to the university and ask them for a bunch of stuff. I'm willing to try, but we also have three days. And I don't think that's going to work because the university isn't going to get us back on that. I think that also. Uh, if director Grant, please. Yeah, sorry. I, I just had one thing to say. So I, the comment was brought up that um, the university has other uh, internship programs where they send interns out to other local governments. And that is true, I would imagine. Um, however, I don't believe that they have any internship programs where the interns work directly under directors. Um, and where there is no intervening significant uh, well, you don't know substantive that review. I Why almost certainly Excuse do. me, he's speaking. Yeah, I almost certainly do. Um, this internship program is really one of a kind, and I think that's really the point that I've been trying to get out through the whole time, um, is that normally, and one of the reasons I think there's so much aversion to this, is because normally you never see this sort of arrangement that we have, and the nature of our arrangement is what makes it so that by the letter of the regulations, we do need to have these folks file these forms where they will be putting themselves at liability. So I think it would be much more better for us to do this while we have the opportunity to do so. Director Jordan and Director Freeman. I just feel like we're not making sure that they're filling out their W-2 forms. You know, like that's not under our purview. It's not our job to make sure that they're handling their, and I understand that this is a separate situation, but like, if they needed to do it, that's the university's job to make sure that that's getting done in collaboration with us. But also, I think as a university, they should be aware as well that there's that their students should be needed to fill out these forms. Like, we need to be in communication with them as well if we're going to be Would making this decision. somebody make a motion and just kill this thing? I it's obvious a three to two vote. Just make a motion and do it. We're going to go to Director Freeman, Director Brandt, and then I'm going to call the question. Okay. Um, now it was uh, Sultan Swift. Oh no, no, I don't remember. Director Grant. So what I wanted to say was that the the university is not at liability if the interns don't file their forms and then get fined. There's no way that the interns would be able to sue the university. Um, they would be able to do that with us. So this is the reason why we are being so forceful on this. I think, and. That's all I have to say. Yeah, and I'll just say that the university isn't the legislative body. We're the legislative body. Um, although it's a university employees working to, to help us, um, their work is to assist the decision makers of the legislative body, um, which is on this side, um, not on the university's side. Um, Director Freeman, did you remember what you were going to um, say? I Sort of. Um, so, I mean, I, what, one, one issue that we have here is, I mean, so it's not quite what I was going to say, but it's highly related to a motion that might be about to be made, is, is that, um, I mean, in, in one way of looking at this is also that we've just constructed a joint employment contract with the university, and that is a terminology that has come up before. Um, and and I, I, I'm concerned about that level, but I'm not as concerned about it. Um, the, uh, um, we, we, currently, we currently are set up in this awkward scenario where we are directly responsible for uh, the work supervision. Oh, I, but I, I, that, that reminds me of the thing I was supposed to be bringing up. Is, uh, so Spencer had pointed out about the um, uh, other internships at the university. And so I actually have spoken with political science about the other internship programs. And most of the internship programs that, and if I believe actually she did say all um, that they do, they don't 
directly employ them. The internship is set up such that, for example, the San Ynez Community Service District employs the person, and then the internship is simply coordinated from the university, and then all the educational aspects of it are done by the university. And so the actual, um, the, the idea that the university is employing somebody and then handing them out to, to, to us for like carte blanche, whatever we want to do with them, is actually already weird. And then additionally, it is weird in the way that Spencer pointed out, we're on our end, we don't have anyone to manage them, and so we're giving them directly underneath the directors. Uh, director Brant, then Director Jordan. So I, I understand that a lot of these may sound like a distinction without a difference, but it's really not. Um, and it's something that we really need to be taking into account. Um, and, you know, this, it, it, I, w I wouldn't necessarily call the arrangement weird as much as I would just call it different. Uh, we are in a very different case. I don't believe there has ever been a instance where you had a special district that was constructed and didn't have uh, any uh, dedicated revenue source and then had to operate in this sort of manner that we are. So, um, I mean, there are a lot of firsts here, um, and I think it's just important uh, that we're able to take this action now while we can. Director Jordan. I think that by us trying to avoid um, a situation of being put in like a some kind of binding legal situation or being I think that we're act, we're, we're going to end up accidentally taking it on because we're going to be taking responsibility for these interns more than I think that we should be especially without referring to the school and I understand that they're saying like oh we are taking care of them now or we're not taking care of them now but it's not this needs to either be a conversation and I don't even know if it needs to be like I just think that there has to be, this is something I think we should definitely be consulting with the school about if we're gonna be doing that too. Because also like demand, or kindly asking these students to be filling out these uh, forms also, like I, I am, is that also, is that under our jurisdiction to do so? Um, I, I really wanna make sure that we're kind of checking in with school and also I think that this is something that they would handle or tell us to do if we needed to do it. And like I said, they have all of these big money legal counsel that they'll probably ask about. Um, I, I just want to, well, you go. I just wanted to reiterate that this is not something that they would handle because they're not the legislative body and we are the legislative body. We are the ones who are liable and we are the ones who would be on the lookout for something like this. And I just, I just want to say, um, especially for members of the public who came in late, the, the biggest thing that I think has convinced the the three of us who have been pushing for this is in the definition of, of um, a consultant who participates in the making of a public decision, the, I think the part of most concern for us is preparing or presenting any report, analysis, or opinion, orally or in writing, which requires the exercise of judgment on the part of the official and the purpose of which is to influence a governmental decision. Um, our interns are reporting directly to directors. Um, they're doing research for us. They are, and I mean, I'll, I'll say in all the research that's been done, I've checked it all and there has been substantive review, but also this is all being done on one-on-one -on -one meetings with our interns. Members of the public aren't there. Um, this is really a quick solution for us to be the most transparent that we can be. And in the coming weeks, before we go out for our next cohort of interns, find out what our operating procedures should be going forward. This is a simple form. This is just to make sure that we're in compliance before we find out that we're out of it. Director Brown. I, I just have a quick question, actually, for someone in the audience, if you don't mind. Rodney, are there situations that the Park District gets into where sometimes uh, you realize that there are forms that need to be filed where the, or just something that the board needs to do that is not necessarily emergency, but where you have to call a special meeting and get the board to take action? Um, how do you handle those situations when you need to put those <laughs> <laughs> We were all scolded today because, because, of forms because that four of us out. have not filled out all of our forms yet. All right? Yeah. And one person hasn't filled out any. A couple yeah. of us haven't filled out a single. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so it, it, it can put you at risk if, the, if everything is not filled out as it should be. It puts the individual board members at risk. It puts the district at risk. Um, but I'm, I, I walked in way late, so I apologize for that. But you're talking about a three-day deadline for this? What, what is that? Can you the 30 days of taking on the position. I see. Okay. Where did we get that number from? The federal, uh, the FPPC. Can, can I make one observation also? Please. 
because you're a board of seven, no matter what, you're going to have to get four votes yes. to do anything. Mm -hmm. Just yes. an observation. Yes, Correct. thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for clarifying no, I, that. I actually, um, so we have, so we, have, we have to have yeah, a, a majority of the full board, not a majority. Oh, the full board. Yes, a majority of the full board. It's not people who are here. It is mm -hmm. a form of the entire board. Really? Oh, so yeah. start cap. Oh, yes. Oh, I've been oh, counting yes. this whole time. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, that, <laughs> that's the reason yeah, we're still talking about it. Somebody corrected me <laughs> like a few meetings ago when I made a comment that was un that I would have yeah. assumed the opposite. Okay, yeah. well, I'll just reiterate. We yeah. should call for the question because I'm voting <laughs> Wait, no. there's no motion. Can I make a motion? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no motion. Could we hear the public comment first? I won't stop you if you No, go ahead. Rock it out. So my comment is a couple of things. Um, I so you have the deadline in three days. Um, I don't know if that includes the weekend or not. But one thing that it does say is that it's thirty days of assuming office, and then you guys part of this agenda item is to create the positions. So I don't know if it counts as assuming office as the CSDs. I don't know. I just read that right now and thought of it. I haven't assumed um, any office. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's a fair point. Um, what I would say is, I think you should. I think it's a not a bad idea to go forward with starting to fill out the forms, but definitely check, like, make that a part of the decisions. Check, and then if say say no, don't reply to you, do it. But if FPPC gets back on Friday afternoon, and they say it's chill, then you don't have to keep going. But otherwise, it's good to be safe. But you should de like it should definitely be checked because you don't want to get yourself in a rut if you do fill it out. Director, I, it, 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 you know this whole law is about officers and officials. It's about very high people in the organization. Just as Ivy Reckon Park said, only their board of directors and their general manager file these things. When I was in the auditor controller's office, only the auditor controller, the assistant auditor controller. And a guy that ran the housing department that was doing the financing had to file. It, 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 we're way overreaching what this law is all about. You're, you're reading down into the weeds, not understanding because we haven't gone through the process of going through our disclosure categories and who our filing officers are. When you get to that, it reframes what these opinions are and these interns should not have to file these forms. We should just, we should just, and there's, there's not a big consequence, just like they just said. They didn't file their forms. They're just coming after them with a whip. <laughs> Director, and, I, oh, and, I, and, and I'm just talking about board members who parts on the and sexual um, you know, harassment training and things like that. You know, but we have, I have, um, you know, my assistant does research. You know, I have a lot of people who do research for me that don't file any kind of form. They're just their employees. Yeah. But so our difference here is um, they're reporting to you and not to the elected officials. Where here they're reporting directly to the elected officials and there's no intermediary. Where I believe that you are the substantive review that occurs be between a um, administrative employee's report right. and a board decision. That's how that PPC would see it, I think. Yeah. But I, I do appreciate that. I'm not familiar with um, And Director Brandt? Yeah, I just wanted to say um, we do have a filing officer and it's been designated as me. Um, and disclosure categories are something that we did talk about that when there is no policy that has disclosure categories, full disclosure is what that PPC recommends. So I mean, you know, I understand the frustration and I I'm certainly, I'm I certainly would not have written a law like this. Um, <laughs> the law is <laughs> not written like me. that. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a motion. Um, go ahead. No, go ahead. Would you like? No, nope, do your thing. Okay. Jonathan, you ready? Okay. Oh. Uh, can we wait Thank until I? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I move to authorize the board secretary to file a Form 805 with the Santa Barbara County Clerk Recorder designating the UCSB interns working in coordination with members of the Board of Directors 
as consultants. And for the secretary to receive and file Form 700s from said interns. And for the secretary to inquire with the FPPC about the legal requirements surrounding this particular situation. Well, second. Uh, let's read it back and then Director Jordan. Okay, so authorize the Board Secretary to file Form 805 with the San Barbara County Clerk uh, Recorder designating the UCSB interns working in coordination with members of the Board of Directors of, as consultants and for the Secretary to file and receive and file Form 700s from said interns and for the Secretary to inquire with the FPPC about legal requirements surrounding this particular situation. Yes, and I'd like to amend to take out that middle and so that we list the two things and then oh, and right. see. Right, right. Yeah. I put the and in and then do oh, another cool. one was coming. Uh, Director Jordan. When you say as consultants, that's proclaiming that they're consultants and they're not. They're interns who the university hired and they're not our consultants. And are they seriously providing you with any other information that you're not reviewing? Because that's not technically the job of a consultant. I know we just went over it, but then again, that's not their job description. They're interns who are helping you complete whatever minor projects. I think the second you proclaim it, that's now changing their job description. We might as well not call them interns. No, it's just hire them as consultants, you know? Well, I'll respond to that. Um, back to preparing or presenting any report, analysis, or opinion orally in writing, which requires the exercise of judgment on the part of the official. Um, right now, we have the three officials who are working with the interns just so concerned, because we really value this experience, and we really value working with these interns. And these interns are helping us with our duties, and our duties aren't trivial. Um, our duties are, are to, to develop these initial protocol for the district so that we can move forward in providing services. So I just want everyone to understand that um, while we've all been, to my knowledge, <coughs> done our due diligence to make sure that we're checking everything, and um, we just want to be really careful. But let's not, let's not by any way, for, out of respect for us up here and out of respect for our interns, think that they're just making copies or anything. They are helping us do this oh, research. And, and I know that's something that you were so con concerned about when we were making this internship program. Mm -hmm. It's very true. But just, I want to make it clear, just within the way that, like, nothing to do with, like, anything personal at all, but just with the way that the, resolu the motion's currently been written, I'm going to vote no. So we have to either change it or it fails. So I just want to be very frank without us going in that circle of, like, let's pretend that we're not all going to know what we already do, are going to do. Okay. So like, then I, as the maker, I really want to ask for your suggestion. Then can I really we make the suggestion? Support. Okay, can we please read it back then? I just think that the whole part about calling them a consultant is kind of an... Well, well, let me just say, um, the form is for consultants, but on here, for position, title, slash classification, and job summary, we write intern. And we'll write the job summary as provided in the MOU. It's just this, we either need to fill out a form 80, um, okay. either a form 804 for employees or 805 for consultants, and we feel that since they're not employed by the CSB, we do um, the form you for okay. consultants. Can you just read it back one more time for me, Jonathan, please? Thank you. Authorize the Board Secretary to file Form 805 with the Santa Barbara County Clerk Recorder, designating the UCSB interns working in coordination with the members of the Board of Directors as consultants. For the Secretary to receive and file Form 700s from said interns, and for the Secretary to inquire with the FTPC about the legal requirements surrounding this particular situation. Uh, do we have to say as consultants or like form the form 804 that is for consultants? Do you know what I'm well, saying? 805. But I mean, you if you look that's, here, that's, section that's friendly with me. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure. So, so like instead of saying as you. consultants, they're saying that like they're filling out the form 804 that is for consultants. It's that's 805. That's the, it, that's the use of it. And okay. then also, can we please designate the like? Uh, uh, can we say that like for like something about that this is just kind of like a temporary fix until we get some kind of legal sure so extend to that last part that I have yeah just a little bit more about like some kind of legal like advice or not even legal advice but just even yeah consultation with the university cool so let's let's okay. first fix that first part and thank you so much for suggesting it um, 
Did you I, get that? I, I, I got it, but I don't know exactly where in the sentence to place it. So authorize the board secretary to file. Would it be possible, possible for you to come up here real quick? Yeah. Sorry about better. that. Thank you. Um, if you want to take director Hedges. Really seat. Papa Squat. No, that's not. That's not cool. Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, authorize the board secretary to file form 805 with the center vote. Okay, designating the internship working coordination. To How about so then the file form 805 for consultants? For consultants. Mm. And we can even put that in parentheses. Yeah, that's <laughs> Or not quotation marks, but parentheses. Thank you. Oops, there we go. And then can we take out as consultants? Sure. Thank you. And then can we add to the secretary proceed to file for Seth and turns? What's the deadline then? Within what time period? Because it's in three days. Um, well, we he's he's we're, it's going to be done immediately. So I uh, immediately. <laughs> Just because if it's within three days and the kids if the. It could even if be less than three days, so that's why I'm saying just immediately. Okay, that's fine. Um, and for the secretary to inquire with the FEPC about legal requirements surrounding the situation. Would anybody like a biscotti? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, please. I brought too many. They're really good. <laughs> yeah, my friend did. Really? And uh, they don't have my they're sickness. Not, they're not special <coughs> biscottis. If you yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and can we say anything? Yeah, we, we may, yeah, we may wish. This matter going forward? Go for it. Thank uh, you. Yes. Well, yeah, come get one. I was there. My good. Thank you. Thanks, Betsy. No problem. Have seconds. <laughs> How's that? I'll take so that. we just need to. Um, <laughs> I like it, but um, just that second part. So, er, at the authorized board secretary to file form eight hundred five for consultants with the Santa Barbara County Clerk Recorder, designating the UCSB interns. Uh, so it's just, it's since we took out consultants at the end, we have to clarify what we're designating them. Mm. Um, what is this? The one they write entrance here, don't they? So we have to clarify. Des okay. Designating their position? Director Freeman. So we're, the, the hand, this is, this is actually now continuing the hand raised from, from earlier, but we started making motion, but I'm starting to wonder if it actually can preempt this thing. I am no longer confident that these people are serving in a staff capacity. I do believe they are influencing governmental decisions, but I don't think that they're necessarily uh, serving in a staff capacity. And the reason why is because um, there is a time determination related to that. And it might be that if they are, if they are working for us for three months, they are not serving the staff capacity. They're working for it because um, the writing that is written here states, a consultant serves in a staff capacity when he or she has an <coughs> ongoing relationship with the public agency over a substantial period of time. An ongoing relationship requires two elements, a number of projects and a significant duration of time. As a result, serving in a staff capacity generally excludes individuals who work on only one project, which is not the case, or a limited range of projects for a limited period of time. The FPPC has previously advised that a term of more than one year is significant enough to meet this requirement. Quote, whereas nine months of regular and continuous work is not normally enough to qualify, unquote. But an ongoing relationship can include work on separate projects if the combined period of time for all projects is long enough, presumably 10 months or longer. So it only sadly, however, only says that it is not normally long enough. It does not necessarily provide any particular guidance on whether three months could, in some situations, be long enough. So let's just ask the FPCC. Wait, but let's, uh, let's finish no, with something. Let, let's clarify, because he was reading off the definition of what being in a staff capacity is. Whether or not they're in a staff capacity doesn't affect whether or not they're involved in, quote, making governmental decisions which is the true standard that we're concerned oh, about. So, I, I, so I, there's I a distinction a without a difference. See, this is I was under the impression that the law specifically stated that it had to both be serving in a staff capacity well, no, and we need to participating in the making oh, of okay. governmental yeah. decisions. So I thought it was yeah. either. Okay. I, so. Can I, are you gonna, uh, see, this is what I'm talking about, where this is literally not a matter of opinion because none of us are mm -hmm. lawyers. I agree that it's and not we can a matter of opinion. I know, That's but we why I'm all, pushing hard on this. I know. We can, <laughs> what I'm saying is that we can, no, but I'm saying that like if we're like if he's saying that this is staff, it's like it. We're literally not lawyers. We are not like mm -hmm. this is not our role. This is why we have other resources. That's why we need we to. We don't just have ask. these resources though. Just call the FPPC. It's free. We, we, we don't have please. these. It's free. We have plenty of practical sure. experience. Yes. And we do. That's I've why I've watched being these conflict of votes interest free. codes for 25 years. <laughs> they don't apply to these interns. It just doesn't make sense what we're trying to do. 
think it does, given that there's well, uh, interns that serve that. underneath directors yeah. without that intervening substantive They're only here for 10 weeks each. They're going to have a clue to the okay. so mm -hmm. this short period of time. Jay's making a good thing. There's, there's no link. Right. Right. Our intern is working yeah. on it. So, so, so I just want to receive, I think, a compromise, or read a compromise that Director <laughs> Jordan and I have arrived at. <laughs> to be a Bob, don't be mad. To be a, <laughs> to, to be a <laughs> friendly with the second. <laughs> okay, yes. authorize the board secretary to I'm file a, form yeah. 805 for consultants with the Santa Barbara County Reclerk in regard to the UCSB interns working in coordination with members of the board of directors for the secretary to receive and file form 700s from said interns immediately for the secretary to inquire with the FPPC about the legal requirements surrounding this particular situation and consult with the university regarding this matter going forward. Okay. Amendments, amendments are friendly. Um, I have a question though. Um, can we get the board president to uh, inquire that PPC? Mm -hmm. Because then I'm doing everything else. <laughs> okay. I love it. You will be able to call him tomorrow. Yeah, 9 to 11. Right? Friday, uh, Fridays. Monday through Thursday, Friday. 9 to 11. I thought they were Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's when they were over their summer hours. <laughs> with anyone with the well, I'll, I'll look it up again. Yeah. Likes to check. <laughs> well, okay, but here, so I just fixed that part, and it's now going to be in my court. I'll do it as soon as as soon as is possible on their end. Um, my end will. I'll certainly be going for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but authorize the board secretary to file form 805 for consultants with the Santa Barbara County Clerk Recorder in regard to the UCSB interns working in coordination with the members of the board of directors for the secretary to receive and file Form 700s from said interns immediately, for the board president to inquire with the FPPC about the legal requirements surrounding this particular situation, and to consult with the University of California, Santa Barbara, regarding this matter going forward. Friendly. OK. Any more board discussion? If we had an acting general manager, would all your guys' opinions change? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Know anyone? Who's willing to work for one dollar? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Any uh, any more public well, comment? We'll this issue. Any more public comment? I, I already made your comments. Okay. I'm calling the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Opposed? <laughs> and just to clarify, that was. That was a yeah. Okay. So. For now. So <laughs> any abstention? So ordered. So that is four ayes with Director Freeman, Director Jordan, Director Bertrand, Director Brandt. One no, Director Geis. Two members absent, Director Thurlow, <coughs> Director Hedges. Motion passes. Thank you all so much. Uh, really quick, motion was you and Spencer? Yes. yes. Thank right. you. All right, you want to go over there? This is going to be an easier agenda going forward. Yeah. Um, there go. I more good news. <laughs> you sure? Good news. I'm going yeah. on, a, I'm going on a, 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 like 36 hours now, so I might need to like leave well, at some point. Wait, did you not sleep last night? No. 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 <laughs> Lisa, I, no. I, I uh, I please, 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 please feel free to. Okay. <laughs> I'm like a little bit dizzy, but I think I can make it. Okay. <laughs> I've been eating snacks all day. <laughs> okay, so now um, we're going to move on to item 3.2, uh, receive a report from the board president on discussions with UCSB administration, discuss the ideas presented, and consider the roles of committees pertaining to developing plans for the provisions of services and negotiations with UCSB. Um, what I wanted to do here was um, just kind of in a in a meeting where we're considering what I thought at first to be quick things, um, lay this out. Um, but we don't need to make any decisions with this tonight. But I just want everyone to know um, what took place at this meeting since it was um, about a week ago now. So I, uh, per the board's instruction, submitted a letter to Chancellor Yang, um, introducing myself and. Um, referencing the, the pledge $200,000 contribution for the next seven years and um, discussing the initiation of the process um, to negotiate between the CSD and UCSB and, and to get a service designed and, and that money used for it. Uh, within a few days, I was uh, contacted uh, back from Chancellor Yang. He wrote me a very nice email. He's a man. Um, and he let me know that uh, on his end, uh, Executive Vice Chancellor David Marshall will be the point person for um, working in coordination with the CSD 
um, to, to create a plan to, to move forward. Um, and under um, Mr. Marshall, the Chancellor's Coordinating Committee on Isla Vista. So uh, a few days after that, uh, the Executive Vice Chancellor invited me to a meeting along with um, Director Thurlow as the university's um, appointed director. And also joined with us was uh, Kum Kum um, Bahavni. Bob Mani. Bob Mani. Um, from, she's a member of the CCCIV and um, member of the Academic Senate. Um, Chuck Haynes um, from Office of Budget and Planning. And, um, and Mr. Marshall. And we had a really good discussion. Um, at first, I just briefed them on what we've done in the first two months, um, some of our um, big uh, accomplishments, such as uh, coming close to completing our preliminary policy manual, um, our internship program up and running um, and ever improving, and um, <laughs> also uh, the discussion that we had for um, our first services, um, including the, the trash discussion that we had and um, the public safety um, discussion that we began. Um, and I, uh, I let him know that after discussing with the board, um, the public safety um, preliminary discussion, all of us who were at the meeting were in concurrence that it was a top priority um, unofficially, but um, especially in regard to police protection services. And um, from there, I heard uh, an update from the discussions at the Chancellor's Coordinating Committee, um, because they have been actively discussing um, their ideas for how the university should work with um, the Isla Vista Community Services District. As far as services, um, they really are open to hearing what, what we want to suggest, um, which I really appreciated and it was very sincere. Uh, but I was also very impressed with the ideas that they had because we had a lot of intersection. Um, the first idea of which is uh, referenced in the brief report is um, in regard to the Police Protection Service. They um, had this idea of, and this actually came from the University of California Police Department, uh, working with the IVCSD to contract for a sexual assault investigator in Isla Vista. Mm -hmm. Currently, UCPD hires um, a sexual assault investigator for on campus, but out here in Isla Vista, um, that's not a position that, that is filled um, or that's been funded or in place. And I think it's a very, uh, very good idea uh, to consider given uh, the increase in sexual assault we've seen here um, just over the past year, it's more than doubled in Isla Vista. Um, we're unsure if that's because more people are reporting or because more acts have occurred. Um, but either way, it points to a really significant <coughs> issue. So how does a sexual assault investigation happen outside of the campus? Oh. Is, is it the Don't sheriff? Get me or <laughs> Don't get me started. So it, it is um, the, the sheriff's responsibility. Um, but from what I understand, the Isla Vista Foot Patrol does not have a specific person assigned to this. And um, right now, it's one of the biggest issues in Ivy. Um, and we've heard over and over again um, a lot of frustration and worry, um, worry mainly, with, right. with yeah. how it's being handled okay. right now. There's a sit-in in the chancellor's office for mm, 10 hours last week about this matter. Yeah. Um, well, is it directly related to this part? Because I. I will take a lot of questions uh, at the end. Okay, um, so we had that. Um, they they introduced that discussion, and um, as far as funding for a position, um, the ballpark that was thrown out was one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So obviously, we would look to pay in part for this position, um, even even though it is a very worthy cause. We may not want to spend um, one hundred fifty thousand out of a two hundred thousand dollar annual contribution towards that. Um, I'd love to see what more details come from it, but hopefully if we were to do something like that, we would be um, funding in partnership with another source, um, but definitely a significant part of that coming coming from us. Um, after that, I let them know um, the preliminary public safety discussion that we had here where we, we spoke about um, expanding CSOs, um, and this was a very brief conversation on our part, but the idea about um, expanding the CSO program to provide more escorts in Isla Vista to be more available, that's community service officers. Um, since these are student workers, uh, as we discussed, we wouldn't be looking to increase their patrolling in Isla Vista, but to just make them more accessible for escorts. Because right now, uh, the status quo, uh, on, a, on a weekend night, you have to call um, to, to be helped, and uh, you will get helped, but that may take a long time. And there's a lot of people who might not know to call, and there's a lot of people who may not be willing to wait in the dark um, to receive this assistance. 
So my initial idea was that uh, perhaps we could contract for more uh, to expand the program to have CSOs set up in, in a known location where someone could go and get assistance or someone could know to walk their friend over there to be assisted right away. Um, and I, So I let them know that idea too and uh, everyone thought it was a pretty good idea. Um, so those were the two uh, items in that, in that short meeting that we were discussing among public safety. Next, um, as you'll see on here, we had a discussion about tenant mediation, which I got to say this was a surprise um, for me in that meeting because my thought thus far has been um, the university already pays a lot of money for um, tenant mediation provided by the community housing office, um, and I wasn't sure if they would want to put more money towards it since it is already serving their students. Um, but I was really pleased to hear uh, that they actually are, are really concerned about housing in Isla Vista right now. Um, and there's <coughs> been a recent change in the leadership of the community housing office. And with that, uh, they're really interested in moving forward looking at uh, developing the best possible program for Isla Vista. There's been a lot of concerns on different sides about current tenant mediation program in Isla Vista. Um, and they knew that in uh, the process forming the district, we received presentations from both the community housing office and the rental mediation uh, program from the city of Santa Barbara, um, which seemed to be a much more comprehensive and focused program on providing mediation. Um, additionally, we mentioned the Isla Vista Tenants Union as another organization that's on the forefront of tenants issues in Isla Vista. And uh, in that discussion, where we arrived at is in, in the near future, it may be good to sit down and have an official discussion between Isla Vista Community Services District, UCSB Community Housing Office, the Rental Housing Mediation Program, and Isla Vista Tenants Union to see the overlapping priorities and to really see if uh, rental housing mediation, how it's done right now, is, is the most effective. Rodney? So I just wanted to add at the IBCN meeting today, uh, Deanna said that the Tenants Union got funding to hire a consultant that can work on it because right now they only service the students and they got hired or got funding to hire somebody to do the same service for um, the community. Oh, awesome. Well, that's really good to hear. You may not have to spend your money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, so the one radical, well, I guess that's really putting a value judgment on it, but the one idea that, um, that I thought was really interesting was um, the administrators spoke about since there is the, the change in CHO right now and uh, the rental housing mediation program seems to be a better service. One option could be just contracting with rental me housing mediation program because it's focused on this. CHO has many responsibilities, um, but with the rental housing mediation program, their sole existence is to mediate and provide tenants and landlords with information that's helpful um, to, to avoid um, having to go to court. So uh, we discussed that and that was uh, something that they were interested in, but again they said, uh, all right, here, these are two ideas that we've come up with, but um, it wouldn't be mutually agreed upon services if we're just telling you. Um, so they also wanted us um, to, to come back with more suggestions. Um, and then the last kind of item in that discussion was they understand that in order to contract for these services, the CSD will need to have some more administrative infrastructure than it has right now, um, such as having office space, um, such as having insurance, um, and any, anything else that might be associated with that, just the basic bare, bare bones infrastructure necessities before we're ready as a district to provide these services. And with that, um, three out of the four representatives of the CCCIV in the room were favorable for having an overhead charge type uh, arrangement where if it was, a, it, well it is a $200,000 contribution, so if we're focusing on the whole <coughs> contribution, having a percentage, uh, the number that was thrown around very casually was 10%. So with that, say, for a year, $20,000 could go to paying for things like insurance, um, paying for things like an office. Um, that was really uh, encouraging to hear because that wasn't uh, something that's been in the discussion thus far. Um, thus far, at least my understanding has been uh, that the university would be willing to pay only for um, these direct services, but um, I think we should all be really grateful to be working with a partner that um, really wants to see our success. Um, that was my impression of this meeting. And with, uh, with those items on administrative, we didn't get into discussing uh, the details on how any of that would look, um, because I know the formation committee is actively working on this, but um, it was discussed the, the need for administrative, uh, 
administrative support. Um, and as far as next steps, I told uh, the, the group that I would report back to the board on, on um, the, the meeting and that um, we would be uh, creating on our end infrastructure to uh, continue these discussions, which at the last board meeting, the community, or sorry, the university uh, negotiations ad hoc committee was formed, um, which I anticipate will take the lead on these discussions going forward. Um, but that's, uh, that's what I wanted to share with you all. Jay. So I'm extremely excited uh, about the uh, administrative overhead charge uh, because uh, due to the fact that we have no money for that. So I, I was extremely excited to hear that. I was also extremely excited to hear personally about how the um, uh, you and the other people involved in this consider public safety to be one of our biggest issues because that's when I've gone through all of our services have considered that. Um, and um, I've, uh, over the course of the last year, whenever we've talked about public safety, I've talked about the sexual assault victims advocate type position. And so I was happy to see the university kind of doubling down on that. Um, the, uh, like actually going towards something even further than that. Um, now, given that, I've then, so I was at the Title IX sit-in for a number of hours at the, the end of it, uh, up until when the Chancellor actually signed uh, the demands. Um, I've reached out to Alejandra, and I talked to um, Gabriela, and I talked to um, Paula de la Cruz today. Um, and um, one, of the, one of the things about this is that there's a, we really need to make certain that they're involved in this, right? And so it's not, like, so we have, the, we have this university negotiations ad hoc committee, and the negotiations ad hoc committee has the, um, has the charge of doing the kind of negotiation for figuring out how to actually like, deal with the, the details of all this money and services and everything. But I think that the high level aspects of what we're trying to get with the university should be done in public, the full board. And mm -hmm. the discussion that I was having today with yeah. some people is we should throw a town hall and we should talk at the town hall about, for example, um, even, even, if, even in a narrow area, if we, for example, want to address sexual assault issues, we should throw a town hall specifically about that and then receive feedback from the community, community and then that could be used to guide the discussions and the negotiations. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm really happy to see you nodding and, and uh, with a smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Okay. Director Brandt. Yeah, I want to echo that in a lot of ways. Uh, I think that uh, we're going to need to retain the ability to have conversations about services in public and uh, not get into a situation where the legislating is being done while we're at the negotiating table. So to me, that that's what exactly what this university negotiations ad hoc committee is for. It's for the negotiations, and, and that's kind of where, where it is. Um, my, I, I'm like incredibly excited about this idea of an administrative overhead charge, because this is something that we've kind of talked about before like in an abstract sense, but we never thought that a uh, university would go for something like that. Um, but that sounds really good to me. My one question on it is, 10% sounds a little low to me in terms of an administrative uh, charge. Or well, I'll, I'll go back to saying that number was thrown around loosely. Okay. Um, we would look to get somewhere that makes sense. Um, but the university, I mean, they want to provide these services and they want most of most of their funding to go right directly to service. From, from how our discussion mm -hmm. went, they will be willing to do what's necessary. Um, so we'll have to iron out what is absolutely necessary for us to do before then, and I, I anticipate at that time we'll be able to um, come to a good agreement. Yeah, but I, I think it's premature for us to label out exactly. No, I, I, I agree too. I was just making you. a comment. Just on that 10% administration charge, depending on what their funding source is, you generally when you're dealing with federal and state funds, you can throw a 10% administration charge on and you don't have to do any accounting for it. If you go beyond 10% on general, usually half the, 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 the indirect overhead charge or the overhead charge has to be related directly to, to, to the service. So if you want to get more, it's got to be, well, what's our real administrative cost of providing that particular service? And that's, that's how you get a higher reimbursement charge. But I, I don't know if that's why they're, that's probably why they're they're throwing out the 10% because you don't need to do this other accounting. It's possible. Director Brent? Yeah, I, I, I just want to say in terms of uh, designing programs that can have um, things of general use, of general administrative use in them, I think that'll be super important for us to all keep in mind. Um, and thank yeah. you for pointing that out. Uh, Peggy. Thank you. Um, did you hear that the university is interested in what 
the community has to say. It's good to hear you guys saying that it's going to happen in the main meeting, not in an ad hoc committee meeting. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's really important. This is the only money that this group is going to get for a while. I think there definitely has to be outreach for the public so the university has more than just a handful of their ideas, which certainly are good ideas. But for, for us, I think we really need to feel like the process is transparent and that we're part of the discussion and that what we care about is being heard. Because I was a little concerned when an ad hoc committee was created to be negotiating with the university, possibly behind closed doors. That has me a little concerned. I would be less concerned about that if I know there's been a lot of public process prior to that ad hoc committee happening. And then a lot of public process after you guys have come wrangled some kind of idea for, for input. Thank you. And, um, and that's one thing that I should expand upon a little more. In my, uh, in my little uh, letter at the end with the recommendation, you see that I, I do call for some changes or suggest some changes in our committee structure. Um, and namely, the suggestion I have is to, uh, for now, dissolve the Public Safety Committee. And my thought with that is that um, if, if the Public Safety Committee was still in place, um, that would prevent us from having any service-related discussions at the university because um, in, inherently um, if, if I say if I'm in those meetings and I'm a member of the Public Safety Committee I can't talk public safety with any other director present. So I saw that as something necessary for to make this a doable process but then also I found an incredible value in having the actual service discussion back at the board level. Um, so this removes one um, one of the things that I think makes it harder for public uh, participation by having it in a committee, um, this brings it back to our whole board level where um, the board at large can direct and receive feedback and give it back to uh, the ad hoc committee who will then go and meet with uh, the university. When did guys. we form the public safety committee? <coughs> two, uh, two regular meetings ago. And did we appoint members to it? Yes. Oh, we did? Yes. Who's on the public safety That's committee? That's me. Jay and Spencer, we haven't met, we haven't discussed. We're going to have to get a roster of committees so I remember. I'm the old guy, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're wiping the mouths. So. <laughs> um, any other questions or comments, Jay? Did you? Nope. So um, I, I'm curious. So the, the, the information from the university specifically brings up um, in, in the uh, for this new sexual assault detective position um, that it would be with UCPD. I was wondering if there, um, if you got any feel that they were particularly looking for something that would involve UCPD, or if that's something that there would be flexibility for us to utilize um, the sheriff's department or um, things like that. Great question. Um, I think in our preliminary discussions, um, we didn't get to that detail, to okay. be honest. Um, it was probably assumed UCPD, since that's where the idea came from. But um, again, preliminary idea. Uh, Director Jordan. Can I just get an idea of the action that you'd like to be see that you'd like to see on this item? We're discussing it. Um, so there's no discussion, there's no action to be taken on this item specifically. I had some things that there is an action that, we, that you'd recommend. It. You'd recommend it that we dissolve the public safety committee. Oh, I'm not trying to do that at this meeting now. I think oh, okay. I, oh. That's something I'd like to notice for a future okay. meeting. Oh, okay. Well, my, my comment was just going okay. to be that, yeah, we should get into the details at a regular mm -hmm. meeting where we have an audience. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah I, the question I was asking was more because this is like asking Ethan about the meeting that he had. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, no, yeah, that's fine. That's to be fine. honest, I mean, I, I would have actually, I, I'm, was there a time sensitive component to this conversation that it was not noticed for the regular meeting as opposed to making your special meeting? I mean, we now have had our, both of our major conversations about the, um, the money with the university at special meetings uh, as opposed to at regular meetings. Well, <coughs> my, uh, my thought with this is to report directly on this discussion in a special meeting so that we can have the larger discussions in the, the regular meeting. Because I see going forward on this, we're going to have a, have a specific discussion on police protection power, perhaps even a standing item. If we are to move forward with pursuing tenant mediation, that's going to be its own item. Um, I This was for me to inform the board sooner than later on these discussions I had because time is passing. Um, and also, I know that it was noticed at the next regular board meeting I would be making um, the committee assignments for university negotiations ad hoc committee um, and I wanted to speak with my colleagues first about um, what happened and what's probably going to be largely driven by this committee going forward. I wanted to have that opportunity to speak with you before making those choices. 
Dr. Brown. I just want to say if there's any suggested action, and it's fine if we do this at a regular meeting too, but I think the suggestion about having a public safety town hall where we can really do a fair amount of outreach to the public and get people in the room to let us know what their public safety priorities are would, aside from being a lot of fun, um, I think would be really valuable for us shaping these conversations going forward. Absolutely. Um, especially given uh, the nature of how we know that uh, students in Isla Vista oftentimes interact with local government. Um, it, you know, we, students don't have, I think, the wherewithal in a lot of cases to be able to show up to every single waking meeting. But that doesn't mean they don't have really important concerns, and I think that having that big event that we can focus everything around uh, would be really great. So I'm prepared to make a motion to uh, appoint a working group to, to do that. Or I don't know if it'd be a working group. Or well, wait, we have university sir. negotiations, right? I'm sorry, second. We have the university negotiations ad hoc committee. Are you saying a working group for? A working group uh, to organize this town hall. I think, again, that should be at the board level. And that's fine. To bar any. Or um, you mean the regular meeting? Yeah. Yeah, but the board level, rather than creating another um, ad hoc committee to be a working group, just so that we're not so. having any discussions that we're stepping on each other's toes um, as far as serial meeting. Okay, right. that's fine. If anything, I just meant like assign people to do specific yeah. stuff. Yeah, because like figuring out all the details is kind of. But we can do that at a regular meeting. How about we have yeah. as a discussion item um, plan <laughs> public safety town hall, and that sounds lovely. We can uh, the two of us just can work together. All right, let's move on to that. I know that we did talk about having a, um, that officer specifically for. Um, sexual assault incidents in Isla Vista, and I think that there has to definitely be some kind of acknowledgement too about um, if we were to take any action without consulting the community, this is a board of primarily men, and I think that we will get a lot of backlash from the community, just like from my conversations with even like a board of primarily women on Senate, and we still get a lot of backlash when not everybody is touched, so it's very important that we can uh, like making sure that every community is feeling included in these discussions. And I'll, I'll just say that um, I think that's an excellent point. And um, like I said, this is all very preliminary. All mm -hmm. we really discussed was um, the, the need from how we saw it and the name of uh, what mm -hmm. really the issue that we're trying to fix. Um, but I think that's a great point. And um, we're, we're not moving quickly here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're moving towards reaching our goal. Um, but we're, I don't <laughs> think any of us are going to jump before we hear from the group, but I'll also say um, as a uh, representative to the Isle of Vista Safe Task Force from this board, um, that's been what, that's what we've been discussing. We've had uh, the okay. Santa Barbara Rape Crisis Center that's there, awesome. um, we've had CARE, um, we've had very knowledgeable folks on this issue speaking. Um, I've also been in contact with Roshandra Irvin, um, the leader of the, the sit-in for sexual assault and uh, the survivor who spoke at our first meeting in public comment. Um, so, it's going to be important for us to work with these stakeholders going forward. Any other, Jonathan? I'm just going to hop on the bandwagon and say that this town hall would be one of the best things the CSTP can do right now in like terms of establishing a relationship with the community, legitimacy, just even owning the issue. So I think this would be something that is a big thing for the to do. So 100% need to do it. Yeah. Thank you. It, is, is sexual assault the overreaching issue that you guys feel the community is wants to solve, or are there numerous public safety issues that when we have a town hall meeting they'll, no, they'll yes. surface? Definitely numerous. I'd say that the second most um, is public <coughs> intoxication, um, and not, I mean, I don't see that from a punitive standpoint, but one thing that the community's tried to get for so long is a sobering center, where folks can go to get care and sober up rather than getting arrested. Um, so I think that's definitely going to be another thing that will come up. Uh, people who want to look out for um, their neighbors who are intoxicated um, without getting them in trouble. Director I, I agree 100%. There are so many things that we can do with public safety that will be so important. Another one of the things uh, that we've talked about before um, is finding a way to get these large events that we have in Isla Vista, such as Deltopia and Halloween, although Halloween's been pretty quiet the last couple of years, uh, getting those and making them into <laughs> sanctioned events that are more cultural by nature uh, and that have more community buy-in uh, so that we don't have to continue uh, spending as much money of the county as they do on 
is like over time and bringing in all these outside officers. I that, always thought we could make yeah. money, but <laughs> I mean, I, I believe that we can too. You know, so in the long term. So I mean, and that's a really big thing that I think that we should all consider being a leader in that process of is moving towards a sanctioned deltopia um, and a sanctioned uh, large events in general. Um, I think that it's something that there's already been at least a little bit of legwork done uh, in associated students in the past. Um, and it'd be something that I'd be really interested in. But as, as an overarching thing, you know, right now, um, sexual assault, I think, is fresh on a lot of people's minds in the, in the wake of this, in this sit-in. Um, you know, it, I, was, I was there at uh, Cheeto Hall last Thursday, and yeah, I was just very moved by the, by the testimony of, of the survivors. Um, and it makes me feel very strange to think that this uh, has been an issue that has existed for I think the entirety of human existence and has been pushed into the shadows um, and it it feels strange but like we're moving in the right direction uh, that we can do something about it uh, try to pull it out of the shadows. Director Jordan and Director Freeman. I was wondering if there's no action that we're going to be taking on this can we set up some agenda items to the future and move on with the like just because I think that a lot of this too like the more that we get Agreed. into this I think that this needs to be a conversation with the more of a general public perspective. That was my comment too. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Totally agree with you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we have um, the two of us have the directive to uh, come forth with an agenda item to uh, plan a totally public agree. safety town hall. Uh, Can I just ask one more question on the funding? How fast does the university group want to move? They want to move pretty quickly. I can send you the list of demands if you want it. Of the what? Are you no, no, about no. That? We're talking about two hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh, want to move quickly, so that they want to have a, a funding decision by the first of the year, or are they looking for September? Or I think we're looking for sooner than September, and that this is something for me to go clarify yeah. with with the ad hoc committee. Um, that, I mean, kind of George was giving that they're ready. They're that, ready that's to go. the right impression. Yeah, yeah. that right. was the same thing that was expressed at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one thing I'll just add to close this off. Um, Definitely, all of our future discussions with public safety, we just need to make sure that we set um, the right understanding with the community that this is in regard to our police protection power and the resources that we have, um, just so that we uh, facilitate the resources that we want to get. Yeah, so <laughs> that we we facilitate um, a uh, conversation that has um, realistic outcomes yeah. Yeah. for us to help. Agreed. Any other discussion? No, thank you. Okay, moving on. Nice job. Yeah, thank you all. Seriously. Um, moving on to 3.4, consider authorizing a table for representation at our house, our home, Spring Fest. Director Freeman. All right, so um, as we're here this, this Saturday, the UCSD's Community Housing Office, together with the Isla Vista Tenants Union and the Isla Vista Recreation and Park District, is holding an event for students to learn more about housing issues and opportunities in Isla Vista. I have provided for you uh, in, uh, the uh, flyer and the information from the uh, uh, Facebook account. Uh, at this event, there will be tabling from student groups, property owners, and service providers. Uh, the Community Housing Office has invited the Isla Vista Community Services District to table at this event. During this item, we will consider authorizing board members and or interns to represent the district at this event and give them direction as to the focus and extent of the potential community outreach effort, including whether they should potentially ask for donations to the district. Um, I worded it in this way because it's um, there's a lot of like we've been talking discussions about whether we should um, and, and how handle donations and this might be an opportunity for us to obtain donations uh, and so um, is this something that we want to uh, actually have people at the table uh, saying you can donate to us by giving money maybe to the IBCDC or directly or something or do we want to just avoid doing that? Um, I can also tell you that the, um, uh, my intern, uh, Stephen Proge, is available during this uh, entire time period. Um, I'm available during the entire time period. The other directors are available during some part or all of this time period. Um, the Community Housing Office has said that they will, if we want to do this, give us, give us the table and set it up, and they will give us two chairs. So there will be like a table and two chairs waiting for us uh, when we arrive. Um, and it's a matter of then just having a direction to do it. So I'll just say, uh, first off, thanks so much for bringing this. Uh, glad we could get this uh, on the agenda for uh, right before the event. Um, I appreciate you uh, bringing up the fundraising part. Uh, I think it's we really do need to get moving on uh, 
on taking the next step after having that policy. Um, I do think that this would be premature to do it, just because we haven't set up uh, any formal relationship between any not with any nonprofit. Um, but again, I think this highlights the need for us to keep working on it. I um, I would also say that there, I agree with that. So, cool. Um, I I think that we should authorize um, Director Freeman to to represent the district at this event and provide materials on behalf of the district. Director Brandt. Motion, motion to authorize Director Freeman to represent the Isla Vista Community Services District at UCSB's Community Housing Office's event. On May 13th. On May 13th, 2017. Do you have that? that again? I didn't hear you. Uh, motion to authorize Director Freeman to represent the district at the UCSB Community Housing Office event on May 13th. 13. There was an event after office, right? There was a, the word event after Community Housing Office, right? Okay, cool. Any uh, other board discussion? Can we get a second? second? Can we get a second? Oh, a second. I, oh great. Awesome. Uh, Brent Jordan, any other nice. board discussion? Any public comment? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered 5 0, Directors Thurlow and uh, Hedges absent. Um, that concludes our agenda. Um, we will be meeting for our next regular meeting on Tuesday at 6 p.m., uh, same place. Uh, do I have a well, motion to adjourn? Great. Second. Okay, motion to adjourn. Made by Grant, seconded by Jordan. Any board discussion? Any public comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? So ordered. Uh, we are adjourned at 8.31 p.m. See you Thank on you. Tuesday, everybody. <laughs>